once again this is uncle jimmy with jimmy's train station and travel adventures and today i am in a place i love uh it's outdoorsy i like being here and i'm actually uh at my in-laws home here in uh west virginia and i'm in a, a little town called antioch which is not even populated or even on the map if you try to google it it's close to kaiser west virginia and uh here in antioch i'm gonna go show you something that's really neat part of history here and uh as you can see i'm in a wooded area up in the mountains and and uh a lot of amish down through here and uh i'm at my in-laws home and and uh, i'm going to film and show you um a famous president's uh, mother's birthplace and that that person is nancy hanks and nancy hanks uh tom hanks is a direct descendant the actor from that side of the family of nancy hanks now nancy hanks would end up being abraham lincoln uh the president of the united states his mother so nancy hanks was president lincoln's mother and i'm going to show you where she was born and it was right here in antioch west virginia up on a mountain there's a replica cabin right where her cabin set that she was born in i'll give you a little history about her and uh and uh what happened to her and and then we're going to go into kaiser west virginia it's just a couple miles away and go to a couple famous graves there and i'll tell you about those people so a little bit of history here and a couple famous graves so follow me on this adventure so hello we are here uh we went up me and my daughter my daughter's with me and i wanted to show her this and we are at the birthplace of nancy hanks which was abraham lincoln's mom so we'll take you up and show you the replica cabin where it's set where the real cabin set and i'll give you a little history about nancy hanks so follow us on this adventure here it says uh cabin parking it's just up a road a back road up the mountains you can see we're in the mountains of kaiser or, or uh antioch west virginia and it says nancy hanks memorial cabin right here are you even allowed to go in? we're allowed to go in yes um, so you have to park at the gate and walk up to it but this cabin up here is a replica of the cabin that she was born in and then we'll take you down to kaiser and finish the video and i've got two famous people buried in the cemetery down there they got the windmills up on the mountains here as you can see you can't get a clear view of them now but driving down here you can but the road's called nancy hanks drive and like I said, Antioch is not even on. Oh, there's people up here. Not even on the. Uh, if you try to Google, you won't find it. So we're almost up here. I believe there's a little memorial marker up here. So we've made it. And there's a little marker right here. It says this tablet marks the site of the cabin where Nancy Hank Lincoln's mother was born in 1782. It says erected by the Nancy Hanks Association in 1933. And over here is a replica cabin of what she was born in. Can't go in it, but you can look at it. Yeah, I'm pretty sure you can't go inside. It's locked. Yeah, it's like locked multiple ways. <clears throat> but this is the original foundation or area where the cabin was. And they've got it set up like what it would have looked like when she was born there. It's got the old rope tied beds. It's got the brick flooring. Very comfortable.
But that's the way it was. It's was probably a dirt floor back then. Not now brick. it's made of brick. But this is a replica cabin of what she was born in. There's a wasp nest right there, so I'm going to be oh, careful. Yes. It's not. Play with that. But I'll sit here for a minute and uh, tell you a little history about Nancy Hanks as we look out over the mountains. It says, uh, Nancy Hanks Lincoln, born February 5th, 1784, died October 5th, 1818, was the mother of U.S. President Abraham Lincoln. Her marriage to Thomas Lincoln also produced a daughter, Sarah, and a son, Thomas Jr., a little out of breath here, I'm sorry. <laughs> I had to climb that hill. It said, Thomas Jr., when Nancy and Thomas had been married for just over 10 years, the family moved from Kentucky to Western Perry County, Indiana in 1816. When Spencer County was formed in 1818, the Lincoln homestead lay within its current boundaries. Nancy Lincoln died from milk sickness or consumption in 1818 at the Little Pigeon Creek community in Spencer County when Abraham Lincoln was only nine years old. Now what the milk sickness was is uh it was a disease that people got. There's this plant called the milk plant that grows out there in Illinois. And when the cows ate the weed, it didn't hurt the cows, but it poisoned the milk. And then when humans consumed the milk, it was almost like dying of food poisoning because it poisoned the milk and they had no way or medicine back then to cure it so it was a painful death like stomach cramps uh, diarrhea that kind of thing and it and it ended up like dehydrating you and killing you but that's what she died of but this is the hill in the mountains here in Antioch and the replica cabin which sits right where Nancy Hanks was born mother of Abraham Lincoln so I thought I'd share that with you now follow us as we go into town to Kaiser and I'm going to show you two famous people that's buried there in Kaiser and tell you about them. So follow us on this adventure. Hey, once again, we're here now. We are in Queens Mary Meadow Cemetery in Kaiser, West Virginia. And we are visiting uh, two famous graves. This is just a couple, few miles from my in-law's house. And I'll take you and show you this grave and tell you about it. So follow us. Right here where these snowmen are, as you can see. We got a groundhog hole right here. Uh, this is the grave of Jack W.E. Rollins. And if you don't know who he is, he's the songwriter composer of Frosty the Snowman. We all grew up with the cartoon. Uh, the song Frosty the Snowman. I'll tell you a little history about him. Walter E. Jack Rollins was born September 15, 1906 and died January 1, 1973. He was an American musician born in Scottsdale, Pennsylvania and raised in Kaiser, West Virginia. Rollins wrote the lyrics to Holiday Favorites, Here Comes Peter Cottontail and Frosty the Snowman and Smokey the Bear. The music was written by his partner, Steve Nelson. Rollins co-write many country songs for artists such as Gene Autry, Hank Snow, George Jones, Eddie Arnold, and Jimmy Durant. Now, this is a picture of him. I hope you can see that. And this is his grave. So, you know, we all grew up with uh, watching Frosty the Snowman when we were kids. So this is his grave right here, and uh, there's a lot of Rollins buried right here. It's, it's, uh, but this is him and his wife Mary's grave, and she's still living. Uh, they had 19 on there, so she might have either... No, I'd say she's probably gone. They just didn't put her death date on there for some reason. They forgot to put it on there. Because uh, she was born in 1900, they just didn't mark her, her death of the year. But this is where him and his wife's buried. And uh, I wanted to show you this. And we're going to visit one more famous grave in here. Where I just, well, you just got to find it first. 
and we'll continue this adventure so follow us all right folks we made it for our second famous grave here and before we end the blog and my daughter found it by looking at another tombstone we recognized it and this is relation to my mother-in-law my mother-in-law lila is related to this guy he is john e kelly medal of honor staff sergeant u.s army world war ii born april 13 1923 and died january 31st 1945 the last year of the war with germany and he died in germany and i'm gonna read you a little history about him the united states army usa and the land service branch of the united states armed forces is one of the eight u.s uniformed services and is designated as the army of the united states in the u.s constitution the oldest and most senior branch okay now this guy died i'm gonna tell you a story about him it says was a united states army soldier who received the united states military's highest highest decoration the medal of honor for his actions in world war ii during the battle of blank mont ridge marine also oh, he was a marine i'm sorry he was no it says army but it says uh marine john j kelly i'm reading the wrong guy let's see here he is here he is john edward high kelly world war ii u.s army this is the one there there was another kelly but i had the wrong one um stories of sacrifice yep this is him okay in charge of leading a squad of company e he heroically spearheaded the attack of a fur furious house-to-house -house fighting early on january 30th he led his men through intense mortar and small arms fire and repeated assaults of bar on barricaded houses although twice wounded once when struck in the back the second time when a mortar shell fragment passed through his left hand and rendered in practically useless he refused to withdraw and continued to lead his squad after hasty dressings had been applied his serious wounds forced him to fire his rifle with one hand resting it on the rubble over his left forearm to blast his way forward with hand grenades he set aside his rifle to pull pins with his teeth while gasping the missiles which his good hand despite these handicaps he carried tremendous havoc in the enemy ranks he rushed one house killing three of the enemy and clearing the way for his squad to advance on approaching the next house he was fired upon from an upstairs window he killed the sniper with a single shot and similarly accounted for another enemy soldier who ran from the cellar of the house as darkness came he assigned his men to defense defensive positions never leading to seek the medical attention at draw dawn the next day the squad resumed the attack advancing to a point where heavy automatic and small arms fire stalled them despite his wounds staff sergeant kelly moved out alone located on enemy gun gunner dug in under a haystack and killed him with rifle fire he returned to his men and found that a german machine gun from a well-protected position in a neighboring house still held up the advance Ordering the squad to remain in comparatively safe positions, he violently dashed into an open attack the position single-handedly through a hell of bullets. He was hit, hit several times and fell to his knees within 25 yards of the objective, but he summoned his wanting strength and emptied his rifle in, into the machine gun nest, slicing the weapon before he sil silencing the weapon before he died. The superb courage, aggressiveness, and utter disregard for his own safety displayed superb courage, aggressiveness, and under disregard of his own safety enabled him to penetrate the last line of defense held by the enemy in the village of Kestnerich, Germany. And this is a picture of him right here. So he singly took on himself to make a clear pathway for his men and died even getting shot and falling 
he was still able to empty his rifle out into the machine gun area and killing the German and silencing the machine gun and leaving it open for his men to get through. So a real war hero here. Uh, we honor you, sir, and hope that you rest well and thank you for your service to our country and the men that follow you. So great hero and he's related. I'm pretty proud that he's related to my mother-in-law. That's pretty cool. So yeah, and this is a picture of him once again. So these were two famous graves we wanted to show you here in Kaiser while we were here. And just show you a little bit of history here. So I hope you've enjoyed this blog. Uh, if you've uh, watching this, please subscribe to my channel. Give it a thumbs up. Feel free to leave comments, suggestions of other things you'd like to see. Till then, this has been Uncle Jimmy with Jimmy's Train Station and Travel Adventures. And we'll see you next time. Goodbye.